Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today is part two of my custom message box series, where we're making our own cool little message box to replace the built-in one. Today, we're going to learn how to pass options to this box. We're going to learn about something called open args, which sounds like something that an ogre would say if you lock the door. He's like, open args. Anyways. This is part two, so if you haven't, go watch part one now. There's the link. Scan the QR code. I'll put a link down below. Go watch that. Come on back. Okay, here we are back in our database. We got this working, right? We hit OK, and it sends a value back. We did all that in part one. Now, at this point, we need to learn how to send information to this box to set some settings right? To set the title, to put a prompt here, what the actual text that goes in the message box, right? What buttons do you want? What color do you want? What size do you want? All that stuff. But we're going to get to all that eventually. But for today, we need to learn how to pass information into this box. Now we could use a global variable or we could use temp vars like we did to get the value out of it, but there's a better way. We can actually pass arguments into the box when we call it. Now, let me show you why this is useful. Let's say I wanted to open up the customer form, okay, from the main menu. Let's say I want to open the customer form and I want to set some value in here. Let's say I want to open the customer form and just set the first name equal to Jean-Luc or whatever, okay? In a button in your code, and yeah, I, I turned the Project Explorer on in, in yesterday's extended cut. We don't need, well, I'm going to leave it open. It's up here, View. Project Explorer, right? It just lets you bounce around in your code modules and in your forms modules without having to, you know, close this, then go back here and, okay, anyways. So let's say that in my button, right? I want to do command open form, customer F. And once the form's open, I wanna set the first name, right? So I'm gonna say forms, customer F, first name equals Jean. Luke, right? And I'll just put an exit sub here because I don't want the rest of the stuff down here to run. Okay. All right. You with me? Save it. Let's come back over here. I'm going to close this and reopen it. And now I'll click the button. Okay. It opened the form. It set the value of the first name to Jean Luke. And you can see now the record is dirty. It's in the middle of being edited. Okay. So let's, I'm going to hit escape a few times, cancel out of that. Let's come back into my message box stuff. So S equals my message box. Okay, let's go, let's go find that. Right click define or definition. All right, so it's right here. So my message box. So right here's the command. Do command open for my message box. And after this, let's try setting a property or something on that form. Let's say forms my, because we don't have any fields on it we can change, right? Forms my message box F. Uh, dot caption, the caption property, right? The, the title bar across the top equals hi there, let's say. Okay, and then we'll continue on. Save that. Let's come back over here, click the button. Okay, the form opened up, but the caption didn't change. Why is that? Let me hit cancel. Oh, hold on, what happened here? It says tech out free template, can't find the referenced form, my message box F, let's hit debug. And it brings me to this line. What's wrong with that? That is a valid command. You can do that. Why doesn't it work? Why is it stopping there with an error? All right, let me explain why. It's, it's important that you understand this concept before we get into how to get around it. So what happens here with this command, and I mentioned this in part one, this right here, setting the window mode to AC dialog, what does that do? It pauses execution of the code right there. No further lines of this function will run until this form closes, right? And the command to close that is in the buttons, the okay and the cancel buttons. It sets the temp bar and then exits out, closes the form. So by the time this line then runs after that, the form no longer exists, it's gone. So you can't set its caption, right? That's the same thing happens if you try to reference a value on a form that's unopen. So we can't do that, get rid of that line. But what we can do is, we can send arguments. What are arguments? Arguments are basically like parameters. These are arguments, right? 
allow events, right? NumSec. Arguments are things you send in to a function or a subroutine. All right, you can also send arguments to a form. You can actually send arguments at the command line into Access itself if you want to run it from like a DOS batch file or something. All right, and you can see these. Let me slide this over again. You can see these if you look at the big long list of parameters here. That's, that's still, I still got to move to the left more. There it is. See, there's open args way on the end there. Open args. Okay, almost never use these, but you can use it to send a value into that form. So right here, I'm going to say open args colon equals and then something. Let's just send in there in quotes high there like that. Okay. So this is saying open this form in dialog box mode and send to it hi there. It's all we're sending is hi there. Now, how do we get that? Well, let's go to the forms module. Here's my message box F. There's the code in there. Okay. Now, when this form loads, by the way, this move form me, this is something for the members I covered in the extended cut. It's in this member module. If you want to see what that does, then you'll have to join. But this, remember we had our code before to just uh, move the, the form down 100 pixels and across 100 pixels. So it's in the center, close to the top left of the access window. Well, this is the code that we did in the extended cut to, uh, to center it. So you don't have to worry about that right now. You can, you can leave your move code in there that you have before. But what we're going to do is we're going to come down here and say dim args as a string. Okay, now args, our, va our val variable, our variable equals me dot open args. There it is. It's a property of the form. Okay, and now we'll say me dot caption equals args. Yeah, I know you could just say me dot caption equals me dot open args. I get it. But I'm trying to show you here how we can take the open args and put them in a variable. Okay. All right. Let's see what happens. Save it. Hit yes. Give it a good debug compile once in a while. All right. Let's go back over here. Close it. And open it. And look at that. Ah. Hi there. Right. What happened is we called it from here. We sent it open args, which is hi there. All right. Hi there gets read by the form because it's in me.openargs now. And we put that in our own variable called args. And then that gets set to the caption, which is the title across the top of the form. And voila, that's how it works. That's how you send stuff like that. That's how you send data into a dialog box. Yeah, you can set it in temp virus, but that's it. then you can't treat it like a function, right? I want to treat this like a function. And I, I try to use temp bars sparingly. I know you could, you don't want to overuse temp bars. You don't want to have 50,000 temp bars flying around your database. Use them when absolutely necessary. But I still do prefer temp bars over global variables for lots of reasons. The number one reason being while you're developing, if your database throws up a syntax error or something else, all your global variables get reset, whereas temp bars keep their values. And you can use temp bars and queries and all kinds of other stuff. All right. Now, this is just one thing, one value that we sent in. Okay. In the next lesson, in part three, I'm going to show you how to send in name value pairs, also sometimes called key value pairs, where you can say caption equals hi there, semicolon, and then maybe say, uh, you know, buttons equals three or something like that and send a bunch of parameters inside that open args string. We're going to do that in part three. Okay. Now, while I've got you here, I also wanted to mention that if you want to learn more about this kind of stuff, I got tons of developer lessons, obviously, and I forgot to mention this in part one, but I create this thing called a universal dialog box in my access developer level 11 class. And that, that's part one. Part two is in level 12. And it's something very similar to what we're building in today's class where there's tons of options in it. So if you want to learn this stuff now without waiting for this entire series to finish, uh, you can check this out now. It's available on my website. I'll put a link down below. Plus the one in the developer class goes over tons more options that I'm going to cover in this series. So if you really want to learn about this stuff, check it out. All right, we go over all this stuff to change it around, some form positioning options, all kinds of stuff. All right, so that's going to do it for part two. Today is Friday the 24th. I hope you guys all had a nice Thanksgiving yesterday if you're in the States. Um, I'm actually recording this on the 22nd, so I still get to look forward to my Thanksgiving dinner tomorrow. <laughs> But tune in on Monday the 27th for part three. We'll see you then. 
That's your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you Monday. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, Level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the Tech Help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. 
you'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.